Hello and welcome back to the channel, Baku Crew. It's Baku Brad 96 here with another Bakugan Pro deck profile video. That's right, in this video I will be going in depth into my new Mono Darkest build. Very excited about it because as some of you already know, especially if you're on my Discord server, I did finally get the Tertonium and Halcor, so both of those are in the deck, along with my Mythic Nelius. That's not all this video is going to be though, I have a very special surprise for the crew. I did uh, meet someone on uh, the OfferUp app, his name is George, and I've already been cleared to share this product with you guys. I am super ecstatic about it. Now if you've had a good eye, you've probably already seen it and chances are you're looking at it right now. But I haven't wanted to make the deck profile, I've wanted to do a few unboxings first. Uh, but you know, today is a good day. I decided to record this pretty early, so sorry if I don't speak well or it just seems I'm a little tired. I'm just waking up. But uh, yeah, going to go ahead and get right into it. So let's slide the channel mascot aside, get these Bakukor out of the way. And like I said, if you've been paying attention to the background of my uh, my videos, this bad boy right here is uh, a deck box that I had custom made by George. He's a really awesome guy. Um, again, he was on the OfferUp app. I will have the link to his profile down below. I'm sure if you live in the US or maybe outside, I'm not really sure, I didn't ask him. Um, but I did get the permission to go ahead and promote his product and him on the channel. So that's definitely what I'm gonna do. Um, as far as his shipping requirements, I don't know anything. Um, you'll just have to talk to him on a personal basis. But uh, going forward anyway, he does 3D print uh, custom design deck boxes for TCGs. So that is really epic. This obviously is uh, a darkest deck box that I did have custom for him. Um, the thought behind it was it was going to be all black at first, obviously, but I didn't like how the logos uh, showed up. So I did opt for the secondary purple here, which is fine. You know, darkest colors, it matches. You have a black top. Um, I did put the logos on the front, so this is the original attribute symbol for Darkest. And then of course we have the rebooted uh, Darkest Faction symbol, so... Both the Legacy series and the reboot, they're just paying homage. Um, just go ahead and give you all kind of the 360 view of this thing. So this thing is really awesome. Um, the only thing is when I was giving the specs to him, like the, uh, the measurements of how I wanted it designed or whatnot, I forgot completely spaced about Geogon like I completely forgot about fitting Geogon in here so unfortunately the way I have this one made is it doesn't use Geogon or excuse me it does use Geogon but they don't fit so I might have to talk to him about maybe widening out a little a little more but uh as of now you know I don't use Geogon but I didn't know if I was gonna use Geogon when I was talking to him so again that's why I didn't like opt for it to be bigger um, because I like everything to fit tight so it's not loose, moving around so nothing gets bent or broken. Uh, but yeah, I did forget about Geogon just because in some of my decks, as you all know, I don't always use them. So I was mainly thinking about the team, the Baku core, and the deck. Like that's the only thing that was really on my mind when, uh, when designing this with him. But yeah, I mean I can't take any of the credit. This was all him. This is really epic work. Um, I don't know anything about 3D printing, but uh, if it can pop out some awesome deck boxes like this, I am definitely down. And again, the link will be in the description. Like, don't be shy. If you have the OfferUp app, you know, you can find him. He's locally for me, but again, I don't know if he'd be willing to ship out product or not. I just think it's really awesome because as far as I know, other than those little paper cardboard ones in the... Uh, the faction bundle sets. Spin Master hasn't made any kind of deck box for its Bakugan TCG, nor has any other company really made a deck box that caters to Bakugan. So the ability to have this option is just really huge. So uh, yeah, that's that's my product advertisement for this morning. Hope you all enjoyed it. Honestly, this is really epic, and I'm just really stoked that he was willing to do this for me. Spoilers, I do have a Chaos one on the way for the 
channel mascot. That's right. I'm finally putting her into a deck. So that'll be nice, right? And uh, it's going to be all white with the same kind of layout. The old chaos symbol will be here and the new one here. I am picking that up later today, so that is nice. When I say later today, I mean day of recording. I'm probably going to be putting this video out later on in the week after all of my other videos. So to open this bad boy, that's right, let's go ahead and get into the actual TCG uh, review, like the actual meat of this video, shall we? So to open this bad boy up, you kind of crack it like a normal one. I want to be gentle. I actually haven't opened it this much since I bought it. So you kind of crack it sideways like a normal deck box. And it just slides right off. And boom, there you go. So I do want to go ahead and give everyone a detailed look at the inside here. So this is the inside of the lid. You do have little locking pegs. Two on this side. And if I can get it in the lighting. Two on that side. Then obviously as you look, I do have a spot cut off for the Bakugan. 36 millimeter spheres, everybody. And then of course you obviously have the deck space room there. So again, really nice that it is catered to Bakugan. So cool that it was made. Here we go, get this in the lighting. You can all see how that top looks. Personally, I don't know about like, I don't know how people feel about it, but with 3D printing, you know, you get that textured feel the filament layered, you know, inch by inch or whatever. So you kind of get to feel like this rough, rigid, I don't know, texture. Like it's just lined. Like it's not necessarily smooth, but it's not necessarily hard. Personally, I really like that. It seems like it's great for a grip. You know, it's not just going to slide out of your hands. For instance, the uh, Boulder Tech deck boxes, you know, right? Right here, these things, they can get quite slippery, right? So there's no, not really a whole lot of grip to them. But with 3D print, like this thing you can see, like it has grip. Like you're, you're not, this isn't sliding out of your hands for any reason. But moving forward onto the actual deck. I know, right? Baku Brad uses sleeves. What? I know, insane. That's how you know this deck's never getting taken apart and it's staying right here. But uh, so taking a look at the deck's box, I don't want the Bakugan to fall out. But deck and Baku core in your little big slot here. And then all three Bakugan fit in this little compartment right here. And they fit, fit perfectly, I might add, right? Like a nice cozy fit. As y'all can see, my Tertonium tucked in very nicely in there. Not a lot of wiggle room here. I'll shake it a little bit. You do get a slight wiggle, but it's not a lot. You know, obviously your Bakugan aren't going to be knocking back and forth. They're not going to pop open while they're in there. Just really, really solid build. It's going to protect your Bakugan perfectly. You know, you're not going to get any problems there. But there is my Mythic Nelius. And Tertonium kind of spoiled the team right off the bat there, but it's okay. So I'm going to slide this camera over. And we're going to go down just a bit, just so I can see the cards a little bit better with you guys. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and start off with the main team. For those of you who don't know, Mythic Nelius. So happy that the Battle Planet Bakugan got redesigned with better stats. Really awesome. But going forward... Mythic Nelius is a double helix Bakugan B power of 600 with 6 damage, built in reroll, and then on a helix, so if it lands on a helix, you get to add another Baku core from the field to your Bakugan, so that is just sick. It is stellar, and the way my deck works is I do have 3 helix core, so hopefully Nelius will pop off quite a bit. After that, you all know I unboxed them recently and I was very happy to get them back because my first one shattered into pieces and that is Halcor Ultra. So he runs a regular shield and a helix core. B power of 300 with 2 damage. So he's a weak boy, but I have Evos, so it doesn't matter. And then lastly, it is the Turtley Tertonium Ultra on blue shield and a green fist B power of 500 with 3 damage. He is the vanilla darkest turtle that also has a stellar evo and these two were probably my favorite darkest Bakugan from Battle Planet aside from Klaptor because you know 
he shoots out his eyeball. The Bakukur that I opted to run for this deck, a plus three green fist, because I don't want to be giving my opponent the chance at more B power, and I can deal with them having more damage usually. A plus 650 B power magic shield, or blue shield, however you want to say it or look at it. The regular shield, just plus 300. You know, I don't run any Baku gear or any reason to run anything different. For the three helix core, I wanted a good amount of B power, but I didn't want to cut into my damage. Because if you look, the damage rating on my other two Bakugan other than Nelius, pretty low. So if I did the plus 600 minus 3, I would be going 0, negative 1, and just 3 damage. So I wouldn't be getting a lot of damage in. Which is why I opted for 3 of the plus 500 B power and minus 1 damage core. So I figured these Helix cores would be really good on a combo. Um, if I did land two or with Nilius, pick up another one. That is plus 1,000 and minus two. So that would be 1,600 and four damage. And that's okay on Nilius. Um, and again, see how core could even land two and still have zero damage, but he doesn't negative out. Not that I would necessarily want to do that play. I'm just saying, for example. And that is the six Baku core that I use. Before I go into the deck profile, let's just get a quick look at these awesome Bakugan. We have the Baku Cerberus Halcor, the three-headed dog himself. Such a cool Bakugan. The only thing about Battle Planet Bakugan is usually one side of them is screwy, if you get what I mean there. Don't mean that in a bad way, but there's just a ton of screws. Just like Maxitor, they took the whole Baku on and they were like, we're going to make half of it nothing but screws. But the other half, very clean and nice. And I'm not using the Evolutions, um, Evolutions paint scheme, Mythic Nelius, because I figured I would use that one in all my other decks. This deck is a deck that's very special to me with just special Bakugan that I've wanted or that I just want to keep, you know, together. So that is why I'm using the Translucent Mythic Nelius. Chances are I'm never getting another one of these bad boys, and I was so happy to get it shipped to me in a trade. So again, thank you, Grim, if you're watching this video. He uh, did make it into the Mono Darkest deck. And like I said, this deck's not getting taken apart. That's why I got the deck box. Um, the idea is I'm going to have a deck box made for each faction, and then for each faction I will have a Mono a faction deck I guess if that makes any sense it'll be a mono deck in its own deck box and I want one for each faction because I think that would be really cool not only for content but for collection purposes and so I actually have some decks to play like when I go to like comic cons or events or whatever happens in the future for the Bakugan TCG like I want to be ready I want to have the cards to play and that's why I'm having all these uh, deck boxes made the next one's Chaos though, so whoop whoop Lightning Voltex, Channel Mascot, here's my turtley boy, just did a perfect flip, just off camera, just, just doesn't everyone love how derpy he looks, look at the derpy face, derpy turtle, so cool, and that is the Bakugan, the core, the stats, it's time to get into that main deck. It is a Mono Darkest, so you guys should already know a card that's coming up. I am running 3x Body Crusher, so 3 of these bad boys, 1 energy, 4 minus 4 damage, and you get to scan. It is just a really strong defensive card. It takes up a good amount of your opponent's damage. Um, for 1 energy, even 4 off of a team attack is nice. So, I have no complaints with that card, and I absolutely love it. Um, Darkest Glare, because, you know, I'm never, I never know when I'm going to go up against a Fusion Bakugan user. So, one energy for minus two, which is bleh. But if you play it on a Fusion Bakugan, you're actually going to get minus eight. So, that's where this card is really huge. Um, one for minus eight is just stellar. And I'm sure there's a few people that use Fusion Bakugan, right? Like, I think so. So, again, just a defensive card. 
I run one Darkest Slayer, one energy for plus 200 B power and plus two damage. Not bad at all. I do wish I had more of this card, maybe at two, but I could probably slide it at three and it would be just fine. Um, I only have the one copy so far, so if the deck ever gets edited or changed, I will do an update. For now, it is what it is, though. Can't have a Nilius in your deck without Nilius Annihilator. You can, but I just chose not to. One energy for plus 300 B power. And then if a scanner scrounge effect allows you to look at this at the top of your deck, you can reveal it for plus 600. So that's really huge. Just being able to reveal a card for B power um, is really good. Honestly, if I got one of these, I would take out the Darkest Slayer and just run three Nilius Annihilator because it's better anyway. Uh, but for variety's sake, you know, just use the Darkest Slayer. And I only have so many cards. That's another thing, making a mono deck is hard when you have like a very limited amount of darkest cards. Also, really good target for a body breaker to hit off the top, just saying. Because then you get minus four plus 600, theoretically. Moving on, I have two Thunderbolt, one energy for plus three damage. Two darkest bark. 2 energy for plus 500 B power. Really good card. Happy I finally got a second version of that. 2 Darkest Petrify. 2 energy for minus 5 damage. Again, more defensive measures. To help with the damage, I do have 2 Lightnings. Um, they do stack if I ever get them out at the same time. Otherwise, 2 energy, and then when you open a Bakuran, it gets plus 3. So if you have both, you could get plus 6, which is just phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, opening and just getting plus three really does help. Two Shadow Slicer, two energy for plus 400 B power and scan. Again, a way to hit the Nelius Annihilator and just see what cards you're drawing into. Two Throw Anything, two energy for plus 400 B power and Shadow Strike. The Shadow Strikes is, is important in this deck. Um... I thought about cutting, you know, the Darkest Slicer and using 3 throw anything, but I like to keep it 2 at 2 because I like having the scan option or the shadow strike option, depending on the situation. 1 Umbral Slash, 2 energy for plus 100 B power uh, for each flip card in your discard pile. So this could be huge depending on um, how the game state goes, or it could just stink and I play it as energy. It's kind of one of those free slot cards in my build. I did keep in the Cycling Madness, 3 energy, and you just draw a card and your opponent discards a card, return it to the bottom of your deck. So this is a card you could potentially use over and over and over again without having to have multiple copies. And uh, I like that. Plus, limited card draw in Bakugan is not a bad thing. You just have to watch your life total. Now I took out the Darkest Knights, but I am using Monstrous Surge, 4 energy for plus 800, and then Sync, you may reveal a card in your hand that costs 2 for plus 4. Now a ton of cards in this deck are 2 energy, so I don't have a problem using just Monstrous Surge because I think I'll be able to get that Sync uh, ability off no matter what. Um, but again, I'm not using my combo just because two of the Bakugan in this deck had Evo cards, and I don't know, can you play ba uh, Baku Gear on an Evo, like on a Baku Gear that's evolved? Personally, I didn't think you could, so that's why I didn't put any in my deck. Uh, but yeah, Monster Surge, still good. There's still plenty of two drops in the deck, uh, so I can get that plus four and the plus eight the same turn. Then after that, I do have two Shattered Dogs in case I need the reroll. So, for energy, you have to reroll your Bakugan, so it's not a may, it's a must. And then if you open on that reroll, you get not only 400 B power, but if you win the Brawl, so Victor, an opponent must discard two cards. So, that's some very good disruption if it goes through. I know that that is very chancy, it is quite a setup card, um, but I've used it in the past. I have had luck. Um, when you get it off and you do loop two cards out of your opponent's hand it is really nice um, otherwise you are just re-rolling at the end of the day 
everyone's seen this bad boy already. It is my two of Titan Tertonium Ultra, four energy for 1000 B power and 15 damage. But when you play it, you must discard your hand. Now, people have looked at me like I'm crazy for playing this card, and it's not like a sacrifice BP deck, but I don't care. I'm just playing it, and if I have cards in my hand, you know what? Rip, they're gone, because I just, I like my turtle too much. Tertonium is awesome. I will always stand beside that Evo card, like, it doesn't even matter. I don't even care what my hand is either. I will play it and then just dump the hand. After that, it is my two Titan Halcor Ultra, five energy, B power of 1,000 with one damage, but this has plus one damage for each flip card in your discard pile. So just a way to get extra mileage off of those flip cards that are used or discarded. Either way, kind of helps with damage and base B power for 1,000 on both of my Evos. Again, that's just a way to get them more in line with today's Bakugan. Because the one thing saving me is other than Diamond Evos, I don't have to worry about the Evolutions Bakugan like having Evo cards because they're already at 1000 B power. So any way I can to get up to that level and not worry about power creep, that's why I have the Evos. Now as I hinted to um, at the beginning of the video, I am using Geogon, but for whatever reason, like I guess it's because initially I didn't think I was going to, honestly, I really didn't, like wasn't planning on it, but it was suggested that I do use Geogon after all, so I did decide to use them. So unfortunately they don't fit in the deck box, but I am using two Mutasect, um, hear me out. 6 energy is very high, and if it's in my hand when I play Tertonium, I lose it. But I feel like a B power of 2300 and 8 damage with Shadow Strike is just a good spot for my deck. Um, rather than play a weaker Geogon at a lower energy cost that could still be beaten or just ran right over. Um, much like my team, right? Like I'll admit my team's not the strongest, it's got 2 weaker Bakugan on it. Um, I need the higher play Mutasect. Like, I need to wait to turn 6, I just need to grind the game out, hang in there. That way when I drop Mutasect, it's an actual win. And I feel like that's possible with a B power of 2300 um, and Shadow Strike, because nothing can be reduced. The damage can't be reduced, and the B power can't be reduced. So anything that Mutasect picks up core-wise, or anything that you play on Mutasect can't be lost. So this is kind of a, uh, a win-more card, if you will, or at least I feel like. Um, and really strong on the curve because it is the only two six drops So if I do make it to turn six in a game um, This really is the only card I have to play for those higher end turns um, Unless I start doubling up on my turn two three plays, you know that kind of deal So uh, yeah two Mutasect because I felt like that was fine. I felt like Mutasect was a strong Bakugan it did fall in line with why I picked the team because it was one of my favorites. It was one of my first Geogon. Um, I do believe it actually was my first. It did come in a... What did it come in? I think it came in a Battle Strike pack or a Brawler pack to begin with with Aquas Vipergon. I consider it my first Bakugan because it's my first Darkest and you all know how much Darkest, obviously, right? But uh, so here's Mutasect. You don't have to because the cards are the same, but I opted to uh, have both figures with me. So here is the Evolutions variant with all that awesome magenta, clear pink plastic, and then all the silver decaling. And then I have, of course, the OG original. Geogun Rising Purple Boy that falls in line with the uh, stereotypical darkest colors. So really neat. Again with Mutasect, I got to have two uh, two different Geogun for the same Geogun card, which is pretty neat. So I have my twin Mutasects. That's how I say it. For the rest of the deck, it is the flip cards. So I am running one Cease Darkest, zero energy to block Darkest, obviously. One Darkest Snare, zero energy to block a Bakugan holding a Magic Shield. C Serenity, one energy to block a Chaos or Ventus Bakugan. 
one Crescent Darkest Nullifier, one Energy to block Aquas or Pyrus Bakugan, a one Sonic Shield, one Energy to block a Bakugan holding a Green or Flaming Fist, Punish, two Energy to choose a player to discard a card which may or may not get taken out yet, I'm not sure. Um, I did listen to the server, I am only using one black hole instead of two because it is, I agree, it is very risky. Three energy to end the turn, nothing else can happen this turn, you start the next turn, cards cannot be played, remaining damage vanishes, and energy cards do not recharge. So that is going to put you at minus three energy no matter what your opponent has from them. And uh, that is dangerous, but in some cases it could save, you know, save you the duel. So that's why I have it and I keeping it at just one. And then the final flip card is Shadow Breath. So four energy to take control of a hero. Hero spam is a thing, right? All those Dan Kuzos and Leas. Um, I might steal one. That's why I run that one. And that does it for the complete main deck. I know this is a long video, but we are almost done, Brawlers. The last thing is to go over the Nanogon that I use. And that is your uh, extra deck or side deck, if you will. So first up, Nano Fury on Helix plus 100 B power, but then on Helix Green Fist and an Orange Shield plus 2500 B power. So it definitely helps with the B power of the deck. Again, that is huge, considering how low Halcor and Teritonium are. Um, and I figured it is possible. I do use e one of each of those cores, so. Getting off that 2500 B power late in the game after I've picked up those core. Not necessarily on the same Bakugan, but as long as I have all of those picked up, I can get that boost. So that was my thought process there. And Nano Siphon on a blue shield plus 300 B power. On a blue and regular shield plus 500. So again, just helps with the B power. I've got really low boys and they need to be boosted as much as possible. The third and final Nanogon, I'm sure you can all guess, is Nano Widow. So on a regular shield plus 400 B power, and then on regular Helix and a Green Fist plus 1000. So kind of like Fury, kind of has the same uh, requirements there of a sort, but just different layout and different B power at different times. So that really helps. My Nanogon don't steal core, they don't grab core, they're just all about that B power. Um, I figured I would save the other Nanogon for more uh, competitive decks. These are kind of just my free slots, and uh, I like them, um, and they're good for the team. Like, they really do. They add the B power, which is huge. So that's my three. And uh, that does it. That's it for the uh, deck profile. Hope you all enjoyed it, as well as this awesome deck box review. Now, again, I will have the link... Um, in the description below to the person who made this definitely check them out you know message them if you're interested they're on the offer up app again um, so yeah really awesome and I just wanted to get the word out because someone who is at least available or willing to make deck boxes for Bakugan brawlers that that's a win in my book so I definitely wanted to support him get the word out show it off show off my team that I made for the deck box and uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So until next time, stay safe, drum up, and Bakugan Brawl.